will erase all of the pencil lines. Uh, so right now we're just doing first step, which is just doing the outline. And this doesn't have to be perfect by any means, because uh, you're going to be going over it in pen anyway. Okay, and bear with me. I'm not used to drawing on video, so this is a new experience for me. Something that I like about this style, which is like the uh, Tetsuya Nomura style, the guy who does Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy. You know, fingers have definitely never been something I've been super good at. But I've also noticed that people don't tend to, to look at the fingers that much. Uh, same with feet and toes. Yeah, I might end up changing this hand uh, when I go over it in pen. Okay, let's go straight down. Yeah, as you can see, that this hand is not the best hand I've ever drawn, uh, but it is in its first phase still. Once you start getting the shading and the watercolor in here, it will... I feel like a lot of... Small details like that can be forgiven too after you've colored it. Just small details that people aren't going to notice as much. It's really about how the whole thing comes together. And that's actually a pretty useful lesson for artists. It's like if you start a piece and it's not coming together right away, there is a chance that you can fix it. And it can turn out really good even with your mess ups. Something I did yesterday, I did a self portrait. And I didn't realize when I had outlined it that I had pushed too hard with the pencil. So it left a lot of grooves dug into the paper and I didn't realize until I had started shading it, which was really unfortunate because you can't just get rid of those deep gouges in the paper. I might have also just been using line work done so it will make it a lot easier once you go back with pen if everything is dark but not too dark to erase it's just dark enough that you can see it Something I've definitely noticed with Nomura's art style is there's, there is definitely a lot of those intricate little lines that are being done. You can actually kind of look like, look at the line work as a fairly easy way of doing details. Like if you look back at one of my older pieces, body look accurate. It's like the whole piece is in a particular style and it all goes together that's what's important i would definitely say this step it's important not to be hard on yourself about how it's coming together the good thing about pencil is you can always erase it too I use a mechanical pencil for this because it gives me clean lines and it doesn't smudge a whole lot if I run my hand over it. But maybe if you're newer, I would recommend an age grade pencil. Those are gonna be harder and easier to erase as opposed to like a B pencil, which is gonna be really dark and good for shading, but it's really easy to smudge. That was a problem I had with my self portrait that I just finished. I prevent smudging. Okay, so I have like the top half of him done now. Doesn't look too bad. Really with a lot of Nomura art, I think the face is the most important part. Not, um, it's, it's mostly important just to get like the nose right. 
because that can make or break any kind of anime start style of art, I would say. Okay, let's see if I can lift this up so you can see it a little bit closer. Okay, so we've got that typical Nomura style hair, like Sora or Vanitas. Uh, we've got his kind of wiry, I guess, muscles. That's pretty popular in the Nomura style. This light might be a little bit too bright. It's be like so bright that it's getting rid of all the details. Just one second. I'm gonna try to mess with that switch if I can find it. Oh no. Okay. Webcam fell down. Yeah, this webcam doesn't have like a very good sturdy stand on it kind of just balancing it on top of the monitor right now. Okay, where were we? Okay, we're just kind of on the waist right now. I think the pants are gonna be the hardest part of this piece because there is so much line work that goes into it. Let me see if I can picture just so you can see real quick okay so yeah if you can see it here this is my picture of cloud that I'm working on uh, so the pants have got a whole lot of line work there to do the shadows but I do think this is gonna look good with watercolor I would definitely recommend having your reference picture up right in front of you so you don't have to move your head very much to look at it. And you are able to take some creative liberties. So if there's something that you either don't like in the picture, a small detail or something, or it's just something that you mess up on, it's really within your power as the artist. You can already see the lines starting to come together towards the feet there a bit better. Top to bottom still, but you would do right to left. It's one thing about using graphite is it, it does smudge a lot if you're not using like a age grade pencil or something. The trick with doing shadows on clothing is to have a good mix of geometric and looks very simple. I would say Nomura style looks simple, but it's kind of a more complicated form of the generic anime style. But I've never been able to quite get that anime look. So my work definitely has its own style, but it's very similar to anime in certain instances. Sometimes in your outline, you'll miss lines or shadows. Um, hard you push your pencil. It's kind of a problem when you're drawing shoes. 
obviously you want them to look alike it's like mine the heel is always like a little bit different from one shoe to the other it is very it's like where it gets the most convoluted with the shading It was to what they taught us was that when you move your head the picture kind of moves in a way because you're changing the perspective so the more you can just move your eyes up and down between the reference picture and the piece that you're working on that's pretty difficult because it's like the left side of your brain is very like business efficient oriented and it likes to tell you like what you think the reference picture looks like. It doesn't. Which I do pretty often. Like I said, with cartoons, there's a lot more leeway and creative freedom. hard to do when you're also trying to shade so it's like in the darkest parts and in the lightest parts you don't see that leather texture it's like for my I did this piece of wizard sleeves I think I pulled that one off decently though Unfortunately, Cloud Sword was like so big that I couldn't even fit it in this picture. <laughs> like by the time I had already started doing the outline. When it comes to shading, you want to do gradual layers, I would say, and just build up slowly, layer after layer. Kind of like if you're painting with oil paint or something. But I've definitely found that's a good way to stop having such hard lines in your art. If you're doing something like portraits or scenery or trying not to do outlines. But when you have really good details that you take time on. Artists do. But if you can, I would recommend taking your time. I'll be that parent that tells you, like, take your time. You know what is kind of funny? When it comes to clothes, the bane of my basically just like when I draw it, it looks like a stripe. It's like, look at my penis, it's right here. I almost would rather draw a zipper, which a lot of people know are difficult to draw. It's just the beginning. Okay, the reference picture cloud is going to have a little bit more of an ass than mine is. I don't know. Maybe I can fix it. Yeah, that looks better. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do for this one, for the background, is do all black watercolor. I usually will do like a white circle in the middle or do a black circle of watercolor in the middle and have it white around the outsides. I don't know, for Cloud I'm thinking I should do like some kind of cityscape, like Midgar or something, but like I'm just kind of getting into watercolor so I'm really focusing on the people and obviously the clothes that go along with the people. 
don't know, it's not too late. I could still do this. Though. sketching stage. I'm trying to see around my webcam to see this reference picture. It's a little bit difficult. Breaking my own rule and moving my head a bunch. It's the technology. Another tip I would have for any form of art, really, something that I really appreciate in art is high contrast, um, especially with, I would say, portraits, but also things like this, like cartoons. So like a harsh black solid versus a harsh white solid is the obvious example, uh, but it just really makes them stand out from each other. Same goes with complementary colors. So if you're using, say, purple and yellow, against each other like that's high contrast coloring um and then if you're doing black and white like that's a really good way to practice uh shading is something that i have done with watercolor like getting familiar with all the shadows and then also try to make each project more challenging than the last i know that definitely sounds like a cliche but I'm trying to do that. And even if you mess up, worst case scenario, you mess up and you start a new project or you start over. You really don't have anything to lose by trying things that are a little bit harder than you think you can handle. maybe okay, I'm trying to give this some dimension maybe too much yeah drawing a shoe from the side is not as difficult as drawing a shoe head-on but at least you don't have to make them match if they're like this asymmetry is beautiful used to be when I would draw shoes from the front, they would look like hooves. But knock on wood, that doesn't happen this time. If hooves had tongues and cuffs on them and zippers, maybe. think that all these like puffy pants these characters wear have got to be so like hot because they're always running around and jumping and doing parkour i guess that's why he wears a tank top
What else do we have to do in the pants? More shading, obviously. So I'm sure that the shading is not going to look exactly like the reference picture, uh, at least on the pants. But it's because freehanding this kind of these kinds of lines and trying to get it perfect is really hard. And I don't think my painting is going to suffer for it though. So if you're ever, ever having trouble with like doing a sword behind someone's back, sometimes it can be hard to match where the lines go and like the angles that they're at. Um, something that's really easy you can do if you need is you can just do a very light line through the drawing to see where it would connect. And just make sure you do it really light so you can erase it after you're done using it. Cloud Sword has a lot of these hard line shadows on it, so that will make it easy to color in. It's basically this part will just be like a simple darker to lighter gra gradient, and then these parts will be lighter. And then this whole area is completely black, including the shadow on his arm, so that's easier. Okay, so I think we're actually pretty close to being done with the outline. Obviously, it's pretty bare bones still. You can see his pants are a little bit of a mess right now. Uh, but I think most of it looks pretty good. A lot of these hard lines will just end up being dark shadows, so. As for the background, I might just go with a simple circle, because that is a good way to show contrast. Cloud have, he's got some kind of like symbol synonymous with him. It might just be the FF. I could put that like an FF inside of like a circle, maybe like a negative space. I just want it to stand out for my other watercolor uh, Nomura style drawings. I don't want to do like a square. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a, a negative space circle in the middle that will be white, just behind him, and then the outlines will be black, and it will be kind of signifying Cloud's struggle against Sephiroth slash struggle with the darkness in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I think that should work out. This is the third Nomura character I've drawn with the same hairstyle, because I've done one of Sora, one of Vanitas, and now Cloud. I think Cloud wears it the best though, honestly. Okay, so there's like this heart-shaped shadow here and then there's a couple beneath it. Okay, so this should like a split shadow there. And then the side of the leg too, I missed a couple shadows there. Oh man, the struggle of an artist, it's like sometimes you get so into what you're doing, gaming or arting, arting drawing or whatever, that you don't even realize how much time has gone by until your stomach starts hurting because you haven't eaten all day. Something I've noticed happen quite a few times. It's like, oh, I wake up at two, somehow it's already midnight. Ooh, no, mess up the light. Okay, what time is it? It's 
not quite midnight, so I can wait a little bit longer before I become ravenous. How does that look? I think it looks pretty decent for the sketch. I don't know why I made the side of his sword all curved looking though. That should not be curved. I think it's because the shadow is curved there. There's also a lot more like detail on his chest that I haven't really gotten into yet. It's like you can kind of see the outline of his pecs, but not too well. Just tell me pecs or no pecs. Make it easy. Yeah, I definitely don't want it to look like he's bare-chested, but it's like his turtleneck tank top thing is pretty tight and he's like, fit. There's also stripes and pretty dark shading on his tank top, so... I don't have to make it too perfect. Thankfully, this zipper is pretty simple looking. I used to draw the Organization 13 jackets a lot, and they also have like the big long zipper down the middle, and then there's the like bejeweled drawstrings, and also the chain that goes across the front. So it's like small detail, small detail, and then you get into the shadows of this leather jacket, and then their face. <laughs> So I think I am going to go black and white for this one. I think it will just look better. It's kind of funny, the whole point of choosing this one over the Advent Children jacket was because it was too black, but I'm like doing black watercolor either way. Okay, let's try to make a nice negative space circle here. I kind of like that when I when you do a negative space, circle in the middle and then you do a black background it looks kind of like the moon even if you don't add any like craters or any details whatsoever yeah trying to make the circle match all the way around can be pretty difficult actually i will usually sketch it out a couple times before i go in with ink This bottom right corner is off. That reminds me of something. 
you're ever doing art and there's like an eyelash or a hair that falls onto it, be like super careful about brushing it off with your hand because you have oils on your hands. Especially if you've already smeared graphite with the heel of your hand by accident, it can just ruin your whole drawing, even if it's like almost done. Especially if it's like a black and white graphite piece. I've done that a couple times, like get a big old black smudgy fingerprint right in the middle of a face. I've already spent like four hours shading. Um, so what I would recommend, what I do, is I will like try to like swallow all the spit in my mouth and just blow on it with dry air as much as I can to get little specks of things off. I have made the mistake of accidentally spitting onto a piece before and like leaving spit marks in it because it was chalk. So learn from my lessons so you don't mess up your pieces. <laughs> You can already see with this piece, even though it's probably hard to see with this lighting, but there's already like hand smudges up here and here, just for me moving my hand across the canvas a little bit. And this is mechanical pencil, so it's not like super soft either. Oh my God, I hear my stomach growling. Just wait, I'm working. I need to just get like a flavorless nutrient pill that I can take so I don't have to waste time eating. I'm not sure how I feel about this circle. It looks kind of like an egg shape and it has to be circular, like a queen circle. Shave that egg head off of it. I think that will help. So I'm going to try to do this like I did my last watercolor piece, which I will show you real quick. So with this one, I did the black background. I'm going to do that the same here and then leave the middle white. Um, it's really easy to bleed over the background onto this part though, so uh, there are ways to fix that, kind of erase the watercolor. But I'll get more into that once I actually start painting. But something else I do is, if you can, if you look closely, you can see this white outline around most of it. That's what I'm talking about when I mean like, I, I really appreciate high contrast because if I had just not outlined this in white, you see his black hair and his black suit and parts of his keyblade would have just been the same color as the background. And it makes it really hard to make out details if everything is just kind of the same, homogenous. Um, so usually what I will do is just outline the subject. Uh, so if there's any like small items in the background, I would not outline them in white. That way you can really make your subject stand out. And then I do that with a uh, white gel pen. So those are pretty easy to find. You just want to be careful because it can run like paint if you're not careful. So you want to not smudge that and just be careful when you're outlining it. You don't want to ruin the finished piece. Mm. Having major feels about this circle. It's like kind of square in this corner. Having like a clean circle in the background will make it look a lot neater and more orderly than if you just have a weird blob in the background. Maybe I made the circle too big and that's why. Uh. There is going to be a white border on the edges, so that will also help with the high contrast, but it will also blend in with the circle a little bit because it will be white on white. That's okay. He's, the background circle is not the subject here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and see if there's any unnecessary guidelines that I don't need that I can get rid of before I start doing the ink. 
but I'm still keeping an eye on my reference picture. Right, I made his butt bigger, so I have to erase that line there. Totally wreck my light. Okay. So something else I do, uh, especially in instances like this where there's a lot of this like convoluted line work, is I will go in with my pencil and just fill in where the shadows are very lightly, just dark enough so you can see where the shadows are going to be. And then when you go over it with ink, you'll erase those lines and make it all nice and pretty looking. These shadows don't all have hard lines on them though, so you don't want to completely outline them in pen. You just want to outline the sides of them that are hard lines, and then you'll use watercolor paint to fade out the other sides that aren't so hard. Yeah, so you can already start to see where the shadows are if you just start filling it in like that. This is definitely for you, the artist, because it's all going to be erased. It can make your life a lot easier, though. With fabric, don't forget there's always like a million lines, a million little wrinkles. And with this specific line, I'm doing a very soft like whisper line because that's going to be a stroke of watercolor paint that kind of forms a line. Thankfully, the paint will also cover up any lines that you miss when you're erasing, uh, for the most part, if they're not too dark. And I believe I've always been able to erase through the watercolor paint if I've had to also. So I'm not sure if that works for every kind of watercolor paint, but I found that watercolor is very forgiving which is kind of surprising because it's a difficult medium to control. But if you go over a painted spot that's dried with just a wet paintbrush, you can basically just erase whatever marks you've made before. You just keep adding water to that spot and it will lift the paint out of the paper. But I will go over that more once I actually get to that point. Some of these shadows are going to be connected to so we're not going to like right here this line will be gone once i actually fill it in and this is not even like really shading this is just like a guide for you So right here, the shadows, they are connected, but one shadow is going to be harder than the other because it's basically like one part of fabric is folding over the other part. So I am going to leave this line here and maybe darken it a little bit just so I can see it better. So when I go in with pen, this is going to be a hard line, but this is going to be a soft watercolor line. And same with this point. These are both shaded sections, but they're not connected. There's a hard line there. Another thing I'm going to do before I move on to the ink is I'm going to 
probably do the stripes of his sweater and also the shading, just outline the shading on his sweater so I don't lose it when I erase everything. Sorry, if you hear my stomach growling, I'm going to go eat in a few minutes, <laughs> I promise. I think that's a pretty decent outline for the shadows on the legs. Um, yeah, I really should do a sweater, but as much as I profess that fine details are important, it can be very tedious. Still not happy with the circle. Like when I look at it in person, it looks fine. But this part right here, it just looks weird. Like maybe this needs to go out more. I'm gonna be messing with this until it's done. <laughs> Ooh, that doesn't look good. this a little bit. I'm starting to see eraser lines on the paper, which is not great if you want the middle to be white, so I probably should just stop messing with the circle. It looks okay. Plus, I'm going to be painting watercolor around it, so I can always adjust it then if I need to. Okay, I'm going to fill in this area because this is all just black shadow. But I'm going to leave it light enough that I can see the outline here on the arm. Because that's actually part of the arm that's just dark. But if I blend it together too much, it's going to make it look like his arm is skinnier than it should be. And it's dark over here. These are really just the big pockets of shadows. There are little shadows on his arms and his face, but... Those are things that I'm going to worry more about when I actually am painting. I know he's wearing an earring too, but I can't see it in this reference picture. It's a little earring with the lion holding the ring in its mouth. Something that I have trouble with a lot is when you're doing like pinstripes like this on a sweater or t-shirt or whatever, keeping them all kind of a uniform width can be very difficult, but that's why I'm here. I'm practicing so I get better. Yeah, like right here, you can see the lines are not super uniform, but especially towards the bottom here, it's going to be all completely covered in shadow anyway, so this part right here is more of a guide for me. Than anything. This whole area is shaded. He's got these like couple hard lines on his chest. This is like a white squiggly highlight here, which means it's probably like some kind of shiny material. Let's just go with leather or polyester. This part is all one shadow, so you're not even going to see that outline there. It's got stripes over here too, but...
think shading this part is going to be the most difficult besides the pants because it's all different like lengths of shiny metal shiny metal even in anime it's like gets the smooth shading a lot more than the characters do so i'll probably just outline this part and then do all the shading with the watercolor after that As for the hair, I usually will wait until the very end to do that. I am doing this in black and white, so his hair will be a little bit easier than trying to do different shades with like ochre. But I am going to have to do some more line work on his hair with pen. Like Vanitas' hair was a little bit easier because his hair is black and you can make it really dark. I actually made it too dark and I had to end up adding a bunch of water to lighten it, but... And he actually doesn't have bare fingers, he's wearing gloves. I love shading fingers, it's so easy. It seems like when Final Fantasy VII came out, though, like all of the characters were wearing these like heavily striped clothes. It's like when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out and all the characters were wearing like random plaid for no reason. Like, this really doesn't seem to fit the aesthetic of the whole Disney thing. So whatever this metal is he's got on his arm, it's pretty shiny. It's like the lines that define his pecs are not even like just lines. They're like super jagged shadows. I'm just going to put some guidelines in his hairs just so I know where to do some of the shading. I think another thing that is a struggle, that has always been a struggle for me in art, is blonde hair and like white hair. It's easy to draw someone with brown hair, comparatively. But you have to be very subtle with the shadows when you're doing blonde and white. Might be why I draw Lana Del Rey so much. Like, her hair is easier to draw than, say, Lady Gaga or like, Katy Perry's short blonde hair. Oh, yeah. I think that's pretty, a pretty good place to stop, probably, for now. I would keep going, but I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna go get some food. But this is the pretty much the whole process of doing the outline. Um, so tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, I will go over it with probably like a 3.5 millimeter ink pen, uh, and then we can start on the watercolor after that. Since I'm doing black and white, it will hopefully not take as long to. Thank you for watching uh, this test run of doing art on the stream. Um, I will try to do it again tomorrow.